if you're sitting in one of those temporary barracks style rent office modules, maybe you know which ones I'm talking about here, uh, you might have noticed that they might have bad room acoustics because you might be surrounded by gypsum. You got gypsum in the ceiling, you got hard surfaces on all walls and windows and the floor. So there's no absorption whatsoever in these rooms. And this will turn out to be like an, well, echo chamber is the wrong word, but a reverberation room. You will have a hard time to keep, to make, have a conversation in there on the phone also. And uh, a, a real nightmare would be if you are multi-person office with two or more people in there. And what a nightmare if one of you are, are trying to have a conversation or on the phone. So how, how can you solve this? Well, as always, I mentioned it in earlier videos as well, that if you have, if you have a room, always remember that the ceiling is probably your best bet to get, to get enough square meters into the room. Now we're looking at it. So if you have the door, here on this side, for instance, and then you have some windows on the, the wall on the other side of the room. And that, now it's just hard everywhere. And you got some desk and stuff in the middle. But what do you have to do first? Put absorption in the ceiling. Should we, we could go like this. And since this is probably rental, you can't, or you won't have an, in, in, be inclined to put in a fortune to do it so and you, you probably have some fire detectors lights installations and stuff so you, you can't really do a suspended ceiling which works a bit better if you design them proper, properly with regards to acoustics so you probably want something that you just glue and stick it to the ceiling and call it a day so what you have to remember there I would recommend that you go to at least 40 millimeters Perhaps even 50 millimeters would be okay. But many products, they are 40. Now, if you do the flush mounted glued solution, I would not recommend that you put 20 millimeter or 15 there. Because what will happen if you do that? If you look at the absorption coefficient alpha, which is a number between zero and one, how much of the incoming sound is transformed into energy? So, if it's one, it's like 100% absorption. And if it's zero, everything is reflected back. And then you have frequency on this axis. And if you have a porous absorber, it will typically look like this. With this being one. And then you can consider it as a low pass filter and the thickness of the absorber will be like the cutoff frequency of that filter. So if you have a thick one, you will go lower in frequency. Whereas if you have a thin one, you will still have good high frequency performance, but your cutoff filter will kick in sooner. And what this means in practice is that if you glue a thin one in the ceiling, you will, you will notice a massive improvement up here in the high frequencies. But in the lower frequencies, you will have no difference at all or a very, very negligible or limited effect. And what that means is for human speech, you might end up with a room where you remove the high frequencies, you keep the low frequencies, and that is the same thing as basically removing the consonants and keeping the, vo the vo vo vowels. vowels. <laughs> You're going to get a sound character that's going to sound like this. We remove the, the consonants and keep the vowels. Your S speech uh, intelligibility will s suffer. So it's better to aim for a broadband absorption. Then it be, will behave more like you turn the volume knob down. And that would be perhaps a lot nicer. And you will get a much better solution with a broadband absorber with a 40 millimeter compared to a thin 15 or 20 millimeters. And the best one, of course, would be if you could add a suspended ceiling like 200 millimeters down. But that might be out of the question in these cases. Okay, anyways. A rule of thumb could be like 80% ceiling, 20% walls. So you, you probably need to do something about the walls as well. Because if you solve the ceiling 
you will not have this bouncing back and forth between these two surfaces. But now you will still have plane parallel surfaces in the horizontal plane, both in the x and y direction, both in the length and the width of the room. So you must add something, or must, must, you should add something on the sides as well. Same principle there, 40 to 50 millimeters would be preferable. And uh, you should also remember to do it in an L shape. So this is view from above. Absorption should go on one of the short sides and one of the long sides. You should you should not do it like this. That is a bad idea. Don't do that. Because if you do that, you will have parallel undamped surfaces in this direction. That won't work. But in this case, you have no parallel undamped surfaces because you already have in the ceiling. So, okay, what do you have? We talked about uh, wall absorbers. Recommended 800 to 2000. It's a pretty good bet. Just make sure that you avoid the planar, plain parallel surfaces. Some curtains perhaps on this side or perhaps on the other, other wall you might be able to get some absorption. Sometimes you have whiteboards or perhaps televisions. But one little trick you could use in that case. Let's look at it from the side, this room. And okay, so you already added sound absorption on the on the long side, but now you want to do something in this this direction. But you you can't do that because you have a whiteboard here. Now what you could do is, if possible, you could perhaps angle your whiteboard a little bit like this, because then if a sound hits that whiteboard, we already flush mounted some. 40 millimeter absorption in the ceiling and if this one is like this and it's angled you will not have the horizontal back and forth like this because it will do like this instead bam 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 absorbed you will sh shoot the sound up towards the roof <laughs> not roof. ceiling it's so easy to do that i think it's a swedish thing because it's the same room it's the same word for us with ceiling and roof it's called talk but <laughs> in English, it's important to say ceiling. I always forget that. Sorry about that. Anyways, well, that's a good little lesson for today. And we're going to end that video right here. See you later.